Thank you. Thank you guys for coming to PAM Centre. Okay, my name is architect Adrian Cha Aziz. You may call me Mr. An. Uh, myself, as a PAM Council member in PAM, I'm also a practicing architect and half of myself is an educator as well because I do teaching, part time teaching a few IPTA, IPTS, uh, uh, university colleges in Malaysia. I'm also now teaching uh, a professional course for the graduates, architects who want to take uh, the professional exam. So, um, coming back as my self background, uh, I'm from Penang and I graduated from Oxford Brookes University, UK. Uh, and then I'm also graduated from UITM for my part one. So at the moment, I'm a, one of the partners and managing directors in the firm called Arad Architects and also another practicing course called ARN with my partner, architect Rida Razaks. So that's my background. Okay, uh, I love these questions because for me, a basic philosophical go back to the very fundamental needs for each of the designers. So coming back to the, the terms about form follow functions or functions follow forms or function and forms have to be united, have to be together. So my philosophical into designs is about have to be responsive to the environment and then mainly about the sustainable architecture to be input. And then most likely the, the design input have to be adaptions of the green building index, as we're sure. So last but not least, all the design factors uh, under the philosophical is about maintenance issues and the most important part is about safety and health design. That's about it. The biggest challenges is about how to maintain, how to sustain. So these questions is about, if my answer as a practicing architect is about the challenges is about, you know, how to face the current markets, yeah, the current situation, because more, most likely as an architect, you have to really link to the political, economical, and also society input. So, as an architect, the big challenge is when you produce a design, most of the architects really want to produce a good space, a good form, a good shelter. But for me, I believe it's a healthy products Because always remember, when you design a building, it's not about reflection about yourself, but design a building for people, for you know society. Another challenge as a graduate architect or maybe a student is about time and it's about cost. So everybody knows that. As to be, to be graduated as a, a student, as an architect, you know how many years to further your studies and then incur the cost. So coming back to the reflection of ourselves is about how patient you want to be as a designer's architect. You know what I mean? So this one is a perception of each of the individual because for me I believe to be a designer to be an architect he have to be fully motivated and have to be fully inspired because without that the designs equation without the soul you see so it's always come with the soul so this is a challenge that I can see uh, this coming generation they don't understand about this passion they don't understand about this journey to be an architect like what Zahadid said, you know, if you want an easy life, don't be an architect. So that terms is clearly stated that to be an architect is not an easy life. But as for me, how I created my career, I believe this profession is the beautiful passion. It's the beautiful profession because it's very colorful. It's the way how you direct your life. So architecture, is about designing your life, actually. Okay, I can tell you, this year, uh, one of my design that I used to work with this firm, Architect Rekabena, is a uh, University Malaya. Uh, it has been awarded as a gold uh, award winning uh, in University Malaya for Faculty Business and Account. Uh, I can tell you, this is the most uh, beautiful achievement that I can, I can say now because not only about the final production, it's about the journey. How we begin to start from design, scratch, from butter paper, 
and then how to transform it into the, the softwares and then transfer it into the tender drawings and construction drawings and up to the building has been completed. Uh, that's the beauty part. Because when we done this uh, project, we, we managed to sit down with our team and we managed to collaborate with our foreigners, uh, architects from Italy. So that's the beauty part because we can exchange our design philosophical, we can exchange our technologies. And then the most beautiful part when during construction, uh, how we link, how we communicate with the contractors because they are the one uh, builders who designing a building yeah, from scale one to one, uh, creating a space. So for me, that's the beautiful part. Uh, I mean, from design stage, coming back to the contract documentation, how to produce working drawings, construction drawings, and then somehow rather how to transform into construction drawings because this information of drawing have to pass to the contractors and then they have to feel because the building design is truly unique, truly dramatic. And then of course, behind it, they have a soul of the design because the way we're creating a space is not uh, ordinary, ordinary buildings because every angle, they have a meanings, they have an abstraction behind it. And then all the way, how we communicate with the team, how we communicate with the builders, until the, some elements about spiritual, about feng shui, about rotation, about breaking the monotonous, talking about bioclimatics, uh, until I can tell you that's the best moment each of the designers, each of the architect looking for is when you stand in front of your building has been completed, uh, that's the best moment when you see reflections, your chronology, how you produce this design until it has been built one to one. And that's the, the tears coming out when you reflect. Because I believe each of the designers looking of this feeling of satisfaction. Because when your building is coming up, when you see all the people using this building and then appreciate the space, you're looking for satisfaction actually. Well, okay, uh, it's very subjective, talking about inspiration. As myself, inspiration has begun with motivation ourselves. Firstly, you have to find your directions, yeah? your projection of your lifetime. And then, of course, you need a mentor, you need a teacher. And then, of course, some sentimental value with your family backgrounds, your parents' approach, your, you, know, you know what I mean? Or your family support, and so on. And then talking about architectural inspiration, you have to search what uh, style, what kind of architect specifically that you love. For me, I really love to look into the Frank Wright's works because for me, what Wright's works is very basic, very fundamentals. And then I love to relate with nature, you know, because building is not only a building to just setting up from the side. You have to grow from the responsive environment creating by responsive all the bioclimatics, you know, the, the parameters of the site, responsive for the neighbors, you know, how people are going to utilize that. That's come with the inspiration from the site. So mostly all the designs, my inspiration is from the site, the site force. It's not just browse Googles or browse magazine. Those are only a case study. It's only a guidance, but the, the, the inspiration is, should be based on the site force. So for me, I always believe design with the soul, is creating from side force. So I, I actually, that's my inspiration. And then I would like to share my vision in 10 years time. So before I go to that question, let me explain about each of the person, especially for the graduates, especially for the students, should have a projection of life. So I would like to share since I was a, a student in SPM, I was so lucky to have a mentor who already derived me talking about projection of life. So 10 years time. So when I was 17 years old, uh, I should list down what is my vision and my mission of life in 10 years time. So it means that 17 years old up to 27 years old, what is my list? So now I'm uh, this, this age now. 10 years from now, my mission is about achieve a success. So a lot of people are arguing me that a lot of people say that, eh, 
by this time you should be rich man you should be you know have a you know has a very comfort life and so on but i will throw this thing back talking about the way of life to be comfort the way of life to be rich person or what yeah of course can be rich but are you healthy enough to be rich so let's aim for success so when you aim for success all this richness comfort of life will come automatically and success i believe uh he have to be success as a team as a society not a loner success so for example i would like to see the success in our region of architects generation to generation the legacy to legacy so i would like to go to like like what i'm handling now is sharing some information sharing my experience to to society and then share what i have done on the side keep sharing and maybe i end up produce books you know and maybe i end up with uh, some charity doing some buildings to give back to society that's my mission that's my vision of my lifetime in 10 years time so i don't know i would believe that in 10 years time whatever my methodology my philosophical to share with this, the the society so that they can pass around to next legacy to next generation to next generation because for me knowledge skill have to be shared you know because success is not a destination it's always a journey okay my motive professional goals of course we want to upgrade our industry especially in malaysia yeah and i can see that malaysia is a one of the a, a truly potential architectural and as call as a style and identity in malaysia also we're talking about the eyes of the world they're looking how potential malaysia are. so my motive is let's upgrading our profession and make sure the coming generation like you guys should be inspired should be motivated let's become an architect not because of the profession that you want to be with your in, intention and sincerity you see so that's my motive uh, my my target so that make sure the next generation coming should be a, a future designer a future architect that can be creating a healthy profession in future yes of course because i always go back to the traditional uh, malaysian uh, have to be our core design to spark the design to to have a, a basic things for example because myself i'm a i'm a mix actually you see my life i i i you know mix with the malay culture i also mix with my chinese culture i also mix with my indian friends and mix around with the portuguese Sabahan, Sarawakian, because we are Malaysian, we are multiracial, so don't specifically one on one culture. Let's meet up with a mass culture. Then from that, go find out what is the fundamental about this all this adaptation. Because talking about the identity Malaysian architect, I can tell you we cannot capture identity Malaysian architect as a form, as a color, as a texture. What you have to come with the soul. For example, talking about the space. how to dividing space from private zone to the public zone in malay house or they spell out the way how divide by by the levels in chinese uh, style also have a courtyards internal space and so on even indian also have that kind of specific space so for me traditional malaysian identity malaysian style have to be adapt as my design so i will encourage all the designers malaysian designers malaysian architect should begin with that because our identity our our style is truly universal because we are in tropical country okay this is a kind of a very subjective uh, perception because as myself a practicing architect and also educator uh, those uh, international and also domestic uh, practicing is always become our reference is always come with a case studies So for example talking about international I always go back to the 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 godfathers architects Frank Wright for example Louis Sullivan even uh, 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 even the BIG now we talking about BIG Zahadi also some of my inspiration and then OMA Graham Coolhas so all these people uh, they have their own 
uh, approach so that we can take a bit by bit so adapt with them eh? and and even our local practicing for example like a big firm uh, you know well famous big firms like gdp veritas so they they have produced uh, a certain jobs and can be a, a kind of a, a landmark to our country he just kasturi for example yeah he also our our approach uh, dr datuk ken yang also is a one of the famous architect in malaysia they talking about biochromatic design is a bit by bit even datuk ajidas also Hajida also come out with a kind of a how to separate of spaces and so on. So those are names. Uh, is is a references. Uh, is a references for us to move forwards. So I believe on that. Don't forget, this is the beautiful beautiful parts because uh, the more you change, the more you face, the more you change your life, put in your projection of lifetime. Let's say, the talking about the. Architecture is about separation of arts and design. It sounds similarly, but you have to know the arts is about feeling, the design is about principles. So you need to combine it all and then be brave, yeah? Be brave to face the future and always be humble to achieve your success. Because always remember, we are the position to creating a building, to creating a form, to creating a space not because of us. It's about giving back to people, to giving back to society. Because we are designing a people's dreams. We are the dream makers.